small different things uh, you can do with fields uh, but we will continue to different kind of farming which is kind of my favorite but also i think one of the least used ones which is insect farms because who wouldn't like to eat those little little tiny nice uh bits of protein over there talked uh, a bit about cookies and, and pizza uh, in the previous stream uh, on cities so we are gonna continue in that vein talking about all the awesome stuff you can cook in surviving the aftermath uh, which is of course as you all know uh, a survival colony builder in uh, post apocalypse so not not the uh, not the ideal location or setting for for cooking but uh, still gotta do it so um there's a ton of ways to to feed your colonists in in the game and uh, i'll be going through all pretty much all of them in in uh, a weird order or some 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 sort of a chronological order anyways uh and uh we'll we'll start from the the, the humble beginnings which are the berries and, and hunting so what you can see here are the berry bushes and we should have ah yes some uh, majestic deer in in the immediate vicinity uh, these act as your sort of first uh, emergency rations in a sense no well rations that like fight you back but uh, anyways uh, and are really important in the early stages of the game uh, to to collect. You, you'll be collecting them with either with the, the food storage, but also you can employ your specialist early on uh, to do something useful instead of just uh, moping about. So you can uh, have them collect collect berries or uh, attack these poor majestic people. Uh, deer over over yonder the of, of, of course the the downside is that they're really limited and also the the deer fight back but uh on, on the upside as you progress to the game and uh, go into the more sort of dangerous areas you encounter more dangerous animals but they also provide you with more meat and that should get you started uh while you build your first uh, uh first uh, buildings to produce food more on a on a steady rate and one of the one of the first ones is the trapper you can see here this nice cozy cottage and uh with trapper the, the idea is to find a really really nice lush forest for example uh this one over here and uh, set, it up, set it up so it, it can uh, reach as many trees as possible. Of course, if you decide to cut down all trees, you, you'll have a less, less use for it. But the trapper also has a secondary uh, function that's really, really important early on. Because uh, when you upgrade it, it starts producing fiber as well. And, and fiber is kind of hard to come by early on. So upgrading your trappers into these hun hunting cabins is, is really useful. Both produce meat, which is one part of the sort of balanced diet your, uh, your colonists need to, to avoid malnutrition, which we will be going through uh, a bit later on. Uh, also, if, if you're uh, playing a game that has uh, like a few forests or just prefer fishing we have that as well in the forms of uh, fishing piers and this upgraded little thing here the the fishing hut you can't build them uh, too close by to each other but the the good side is that uh, if you find a lake you have a sustainable long-term source for for meat as well and uh, later on in the game you can upgrade it into this nice little thing or sort of bigger thing 
the aqua farm which farms uh, the little fishes in, in the nets over, over here and uh, the, the amount of uh, food you gain from, from th these are, uh, are, are quite, uh, quite large but the, the sort of downside is that the, it slowly starts building up pollution next to it I think you can just see it on the like the, the small purple blotches over there which kind of reminds you of, of this uh, annoying little puddle uh, so you need to keep them clean and, and uh, from from time to time but these two uh, buildings are your uh, first first uh, modes of uh, procuring like constant constant sort of source of food uh, before going into the fields and uh, with fields we have a ton of different options from the, the site of the fields but also what they what they uh, grow so I think we have them here let's push the day a bit further so you can actually see them so we have two sort of uh, types of, of fields. We have the, the normal one, which is really nice early on, but also really susceptible to all sorts of hazards like rats, uh, different catastrophes and uh, like heat waves. And of course, winter's kind of bad for, for the crops. They tend not to like, like uh, 12 inches of snow on top of them. And uh, but you can you can grow lots of different things here, and this is sort of our base for for the entire uh, uh, um, agriculture side. So you have different uh, types of crops that uh, produce different kinds of things or produce food at a different rate. So uh, early on, you you have access to potatoes, which are really resilient. So if a heat wave comes, for example, you have uh, a lot of time gathering the potatoes you have grown uh, before they wither. Uh, you also have access to corn, which is sort of the opposite, that you have uh, a fast-growing crop, but it withers really easily uh, when, when, uh, when uh, hazards arrive. Uh, you can change crops uh, after they have completed their harvest and you can also order them to harvest uh, harvest the crops immediately if you want to change them but if you want to grow multiple types of crops uh, you can build multiple fields if that answers your uh, questions uh, game core and you can also upgrade your your fields with uh, irrigation so what this does in addition to the nice wood spout over there is that uh, it protects the crops uh, from heat waves but also you can now be uh, grow uh, food on barren soil so if we look at the uh, the soil chart these are both on on, on nicer nicer soil but uh, for example if you want to set up a shop here you can still do that uh, if you irrigate uh, the field. It costs resources and uh, as you can see it also requires water uh, around it for obvious reasons uh, but can really save you if you are playing on harder difficulties where, where the, like the prime agricultural land is, is, uh, is hard to come by. And if you want to take a take that to a sort of different direction you can go bigger so you can do medium fields or even large large ones that not only provide a ton of crops uh, or like food or in this case oil from from the uh, sunflowers but also allow you to place more workers to uh, work on there so 
if I want, I can have three people here to really like speed up the harvest time, which is super useful uh, in, in the case that uh, catastrophe is coming. So, so for example, if, if there's a winter winter coming and and the winter winter comes. Uh, you can speed up the, the harvest time tremendously. Mm, do the crops benefit from placement of you know, buildings if they feel? Uh, nothing that advanced, I'm afraid, water go, but you do uh, create more efficient uh, farming by placing certain buildings next to them. For example, having having farms next to the, the places that uh, 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 turn them into into meals and and that that sort of stuff. Uh, how do you deal with the contamination? You can have your uh, people uh, decontaminate the fields. It takes time, and of course, they're uh, uh, stuck there for a while, or remove the the sources of the pollen pollution themselves, for example, the pollution uh, uh, deposits or polluting buildings or toilets, for example, which which do create pollution. So you're sort of, uh, it's sort of prudent to find a place where there's optimum soil and minimum pollution at all times when, when possible. But of course, that might not uh, necessarily happen happen uh, depending on, on what kind of map you're playing. Large hydroponics when? Um, this is sort of what we are, we are going in at the moment. Uh, the, the sort of problem is that not all uh, maps might have too much uh, water in them. So uh, all the options here are sort of almost always useful in any any kind of map because they are all procedurally generated so um uh you get them like sort of any any kind of building has some kind of a use uh in any any kind of map if, if that makes any sense but yeah um and if you if you want to take and take things a bit further you can go into greenhouses and greenhouses come with several benefits. Uh, the first and most immediately obvious one is that they protect your crops. So whatever you plant here are safe from heat waves. They're safe from uh, win winter if you heat them, uh, etc. Uh, but also you can grow certain plants here that you can't grow in the open field, for example, uh, the peanuts, which have, as you can see, a really high yield, or uh, the herbs, uh, which you need for uh, herbal medicine, and and this you can only only grow inside the inside the greenhouses. But the problem with them is that they are really expensive, um, kind of expensive, and also require energy in in addition to to a source of water. So. Uh, it's it's uh, they are sort of also prone to physical damage, so you can lose a ton of components uh, for repairing them, uh, creating the necessary energy infrastructure if you start uh, a bit too early. So usually it's uh, best to stick with uh, the normal fields, irrigated one, and go bigger uh, early on till till mid game or something. Um, there are crops that tolerate height contamination and the pro population prefer. Yeah, uh, uh, for example, the uh, the potatoes here are really resistant to contamination and will start uh, withering or like their uh, yield stops uh, going like starts going down uh, a bit later than, for example, with with corn or uh, for example, like carrots. Carrots are they grow Im amazingly fast. Uh, and are good for your health, but are also immediately destroyed when anything slightly uh, or remotely bad happens to them. So it's sort of like, usually it's best to have different kind of crops for different kinds of situations. But yeah, uh, there's a ton of 
small different things uh, you can do with fields uh, but we will continue to different kind of farming which is kind of my favorite but also i think one of the least used ones which is insect farms because who wouldn't like to eat those little little tiny nice uh bits of protein over there so uh insect farms are sort of mid to late game uh food sources which have a few really really good benefits uh first of all they're meat so that's an alternate source uh source of that and uh they're also kind of autonomous uh, after you set them up so you build them select uh which one of these you want to grow mealworms crickets cockroaches buffalo worms and then you just leave it they will they will grow them if they have energy if they have uh what they need they will continuously produce uh, a lovely bunch of proteins for you um all the crops and, and fields are in the base game so i'm actually on on the the base game right now basically uh so everything you see here is is immediately available uh after, after you after you play and also one one thing i really like to do is is to build uh food storages next to the build like the food production buildings so the the carriers have a minimum amount of time uh to uh transport the the food to the storage and then uh they can go back to back to work instead of like running all the way for example here to the town center or or, or some other uh storage area so uh, from from crickets and fried spiders, uh, we can uh, go to something maybe a bit more traditional, which is ranches. And uh, with with these, you can uh, select different sort of animals like pigs, uh, chickens, and and whatnot uh, to grow. And uh, once they've uh, reached uh, enough animals inside they will automatically start butchering them for for uh, food uh, the other sort of side is that they, they also have a secondary production of of some type of uh, um, like food ish item for example chickens produce eggs and and the cows produce milk which is used later in the game which I, I'll, I'll show you in a bit uh, but the thing is that you have to actually find the animals first uh, and you find them by trading. So once you've uh, found some societies on the world map and, and traded with them, you, you, can, you can find uh, uh, like all, all sorts of normal resources, but also also the animals in question and if you have two uh, at least two two of uh, one kind they will uh, start breeding and they will actually come here in the trade center and then uh, you can divide them between different uh, ranches yes the the stable ba breakfast of of bacon and eggs and crickets the the only way to to eat in in the post apocalypse so uh, but ran ranches are also they're kind of vulnerable and uh it takes a long time for them to start producing uh meat but once they do it's pretty pretty steady if you can keep the animals alive and and for example heat it during during winters uh and all, also they're really nice like the the prime meat they produce is really nice for trading back to the societies so 
the sort of like early investment into the animals and into the ranches and then getting a nice payoff later on in the game when you can start selling the excess meat. But uh, one really important aspect of the entire food game in, in surviving the aftermath is actually multiplying the food. And you do that with these. So this is the early, early building, the, the cookhouse. And, and what you can see here is that you can uh, get more out of your raw food by cooking them into meals. For example, you can uh, use any type of vegetable and then a heat source, which in this case is the, the firewood, and produce meals. And meals, in turn, uh, fill your colonists more. So, uh, effectively, uh, if you eat a raw carrot, you're, you're filled, for example, halfway. And if you eat a meal made from a carrot, you're filled all the way full. So, if you, if you can spare the expense, it's always useful to cook them into meals. Uh, with the, the mess hall, you not only get uh, more uh, out, of the, out of the meals, but you also get more recipes. For example, the always glorious, delicious insect meal and, and, and the mixed meal, which uses, which uses mo both meat and vegetables for, for that nice balanced diet. They all, all, of course, they use uh, water to cook them, and uh, but otherwise are pretty uh, like reliant source in 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 all cases. There's also one final. Let's go into a day again. Uh, source of food, which is sort of the longest. Uh, resource chain in, in the food department uh, we got yeah water bag we can, we can definitely trade excess food it's all, always a, a good idea to trade a bit more than than you think and find out that you, you just sent a caravan, caravan of food away uh, before a starvation well, they def definitely uh, trading trading food is a is a good choice if you if you're uh, uh, good on that. But yeah, the the final final food form is uh, this, which is uh, wheat mills and a bakery. So these are what require probably the most out of your uh, economy because you first have to find wheat uh, seeds for example and then you have to build mills uh, to turn them into flour and then finally use that along with eggs and uh, ah, nice good timing mr. or mrs. worker uh, to turn them into bread but the, the payoff here is that you're multiple, effectively multiplying your, uh, your food twice. So one unit of wheat turns into more, uh, like sort of two units of flour, and then into several units of food. Uh, so if you can spare the expense, this is a really good way of, of feeding your like end game colony and also you can of course you can put some beetles in the bread to find that nice crunch uh, that you're really looking for in a in a good loaf it's also meat based so you can even even do meat dishes in a bakery in in this game and uh, once you have uh, a good source of like or, like a good supply of of bread uh, going. It's probably maybe possibly the best trade 
uh, value uh, food item you can you can get. So so baking baking is uh, very much worth it. So uh, this is the the food system in a nutshell. There's lots of small different variables here and there, but the basic idea is to sort of assess what your uh, game looks like, what the map looks like. Does it have water? Does it have lots of fertile soil? Uh, is it really contaminated? That kind of stuff. And then work your way towards the so that the optimal way to produce food in that environment instead of just using one type of food for every game. Uh, ba -ba -ba. What does the variety of food do to colonial people? Does it increase only happiness or work efficiency? Uh, the the biggest effect is how how you make the food uh so like do do you make uh try to create food fast or or slowly is your is your colony like constantly ravaged by by catastrophes uh but the the effect on food food on people is how much uh they're failed so Let's find a person here. Um, so, depending on on what type of food they eat, their uh, their uh, this food bar increases. So some some foods uh, increase just a little bit. They're usually the ones that grow really really quickly. But if you uh, create like uh, bread or meals out of them they'll they'll fill it up to full so essentially you're saving time um uh, like from from them walking uh into places where they can eat so in that case it sort of ends up being a work efficiency thing Well, uh, uh, Bandit, Bandit is getting more interested in your settlement when you have farms and a animals. Uh, that sort of kind of happens because uh, the uh, the Bandit attacks get worse as as the game goes by. And and assumedly your uh, food production goes goes up as well. Uh, Exit bread uh, as a balancing mechanic. Yeah, partly. Uh, it's it's part balancing because like uh, they're sort of the the top tier um, top tier food we have in the game. So they're uh, they're a bit fancier bread than sort of the absolute minimum you should have. It we also don't have yeast in the game, so. Uh, we're uh, skipping s skipping some corners there but yeah uh, you can definitely feed them just just, just the, the potatoes if if you're inclined to do that they will survive you might run into some type of issues especially with a larger colony because potatoes uh, grow kind of slowly but you can you can definitely definitely do or or at least try try to do that but that leads us neatly into the sort of uh, final mechanic, which is malnutrition. Because if you only feed them potatoes, they're going to miss the protein, the meat. So I think all should have pretty good uh, situation in this colony because it's producing all sorts of uh, food. But uh, if you feed just vegetables or just meat uh, people are going to uh, suffer from malnutrition which is again uh, sort of a different 
kind of different type of starvation and they'll start uh, losing health slowly. The thing with malnutrition is that it's really uh, slow to fix. So if it has crept on your colony, so for example, if you're if you find yourself missing missing meat, it it um, will take several uh, like meals uh, for a colonist to to get healed from the malnutrition. So it's something that you should always have in mind, like always have both kinds of, of uh, food items available. They will try to eat uh, the food type they are missing. So uh, if you have it available and it's not too far away, for example, if they're working like way over here or or in the ranches, and all your vegetables are here stored somewhere. Uh, they might not go for for uh, go there. But what you can do is actually have a a food storage, and then ask that storage. For example, there's uh, quite a lot of uh, vegetables here, but no meat. So, like, please bring us that takes up exact amount of, of meat uh, meat meals so this place will now receive the the meat meals before any others so now you have a, a source of, of meat closer closer to to your colons for example <laughs> So can you show how much uh, food you should be producing or doing? Um, yeah. The, the food production and consumption uh, is not fully like accurate. You can see it's here. So, uh, the, and the one thing that sort of fudges the numbers a bit is, is harvesting and uh, also cooking the meat. So. You're producing 69, nice. Uh, consuming a bit more, but you have lots of uh, crops ready to be harvested uh, at a at a moment as well. So, but this is sort of not the entire picture because um, some of the food may fill you just halfway, some of them all the all the way. And you can also cook them, so it kind of depends. The other option is to check the statistics here and you can check uh, the sort of past production and consumption you have had. For example, how much bread you're making uh, per day, uh, etc. This is uh, like I prepared this save early on, which reads uh, I cheated. So the, the graphs there are not fully accurate. accurate. But you can assess how much your uh, colony is using per day from from those uh, pretty well. Oh, let's get lots of fish, uh, fish and venison. Yeah, yeah, Zembar, uh, fish and and venison is really really good early on. And if you have a map that has lots of uh, lots of lakes, uh, you can really double down on 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 the on the fishing there's also quite a few fishing upgrades depending on on which ideology you, you uh, selected so you can improve the their uh, efficiency from from sort of the base base version yeah they'll they'll uh, happily munch on insects if if if, if, if insects are available they're not too picky, uh, not unlike our uh, our players who usually usually forego the the insect route. But uh, when when you are hungry and when it's the post apocalypse, I think uh, like a nicely nicely prepared meal mealworm is uh, gonna do you just fine. Do you get three eye fish? No, you have to go see the Simpsons for that. But yeah, uh, the the fish might have some uh, irregularities 
in them, but as with insects, as with all the different food items, your colonist ain't that picky. Like three eyes, two eyes, one eye. It's it's still fish, it's still okay. Consistent food uh, during disasters. Yeah, that's that's definitely one of the big things. Like you can really mess up your game by just like going going with these large fields. Because while they're nice and, and they bro produce a lot, they're also Im almost immediately wiped during uh, nuclear fallout, during heat waves, during winter. So the 800 units of food you thought you had are now gone and everybody's starving. So having greenhouses, having uh, insect farms, having heated uh, forms of fishing or uh, trappers and the like will, will save you in a pinch. Also, you can always trade. Uh, it's it's quite often than that uh, the best way to get like a sort of large amount of food is just uh, to find find a trading partner and uh, trade a bunch of stuff. Especially if they're close, it's a few days uh, that the the convoy takes to to get get to you, which is usually more faster than any other form of, of food production. Conserva uh, do you have a conservative system for food? Um, not as such, meaning that you can... Uh, like, a colonist will eat, try to eat, uh, like, smartly. So, for example, if they're uh, if they're missing meat, they will eat meat. If you have a storage with both meals and raw food, they will prefer the meals because they're uh, better for you, and also you're sort of not losing the the refining value uh, of of turning them into into meals. But uh, you can't purposefully starve them to death or uh, deny them of, of eating, they're kind of headstrong in, in that sense. Mm, can you add colonists of, or that's happening? Or, uh, what do you mean add colonists? Could you uh, elaborate a bit? Yes, uh, three-legged turkeys for Christmas. Definitely less less infighting over who gets the leg. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, Carlos. Uh, you. You have uh, survivor groups coming to your gate uh, at certain times. You can uh, decide if you want to let them in or not. And, and also you can build better housing for, uh, for uh, uh, your colonists. So with a tent, there's not too much privacy in, in there. So they're unlikely to have children there. Uh, but as you as, as you upgrade the 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 housing, uh, for example, into these improved tenements, there there start uh, multiplying more, procreating. So it's uh, it's something you can sort of indirectly control uh, with birth and directly control with the with the survival groups. Um, 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 um. Yeah, yeah. You can you can also create this uh, like a uh, like a survivor outposts in, in the wasteland. Uh, I don't think I have the building here right now, but 
you can build them on the wasteland and, and they'll start attracting survivors to them and you can then send them back to your colony. So sort of get an additional stream of, of uh, survivors that way. So there's a bunch of different different ways of, of getting more people uh, into your colony. But it's, uh, as always in, in games like this, it's, uh, it's a good practice to sort of grow slowly, grow a uh, bit more like controlled, uh, in a controlled fashion. Uh, or otherwise you might run into starvation and then it can really like uh, spiral spiral out of control when when you're uh, running out of everything uh, 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 uh. okay uh, how far can you advance in farming by the way do we get <laughs> Tractors are a bit too high-tech in the post-apocalypse, we've decided. Uh, the, the peak is uh, the greenhouse, the, the fully protected form of, of, uh, of farming. Also, there's a bigger greenhouse in, in, the, in the first DLC. But that, that's, that's about as advanced as you get. Like, a uh, tractor in this small field or even on the on the bigger bigger one would be a bit of a waste and planting a bigger bigger fields might be difficult because there's all sorts of stuff in the way yeah um what else? What else? Uh, oh, we are also almost running out of time. But yeah, lots of questions. Awesome. Uh, do you have any more before we uh, start wrapping this up about uh, food production, starvation, malnutrition, good, nice recipes, or anything related to to surviving the aftermath? Like I said, I'm I'm a game designer, so I I should know, or I I better know thing out to. So if you have anything uh, on your mind, now would be a great time to to ask them in the chat. Uh, thoughts about being able to make candy. Um, sort of the the rough geological location of of this colony is in in North America ish on on uh, around uh, those parts. So. We're uh, sticking to sort of crops that are kind of native to that. But you can make cinnamon buns. It's not candy, I know, but uh, it is something. They're really filling. They can con contain no no pollution. They're not too nutritious, but it's a it's a luxury luxury item. Yes, Canel Bulle. Um, we are at more food, or what you showed is what it is. Uh, we're pretty happy with the amount of uh, food production um, systems or, or alternatives we got at the moment. So uh, we don't have any plans on on expanding it too much, but. Uh, you will have to see what the two remaining DLCs uh, contain. Like, uh, actually, if, if you just look at the, the amount of buildings in the food production category there, there's, a, there's a quite, quite a few, uh, not including all the, all the different crop types and, and whatnot. So... We're pretty satisfied where it is is right now. Can you get a random about for Don Quixote coming at your windmills? Uh, you, you can rename her as. Uh, almost. 
will will call her Don Q. And uh, now you can uh, imagine in your mind's eye that uh, she's really pissed at that windmill. Also, Karjalan Pirakka would be super nice, but I don't think too many people would uh, know what the hell we're talking about. Uh, there's two more DLC to come. Yes, two, two more. Uh, I can't say anything, even though I would very much like to, about what they contain. Uh, I can only say that I'm I'm really really excited for both, and uh, to to stick around and uh, be ready for uh, for the announcement as they come. There's three more minutes to go. Um, any other questions? Uh, cancel food to advance for the game. Uh, there actually are, I think I might. Ah, yeah, here. Canned fruit. This is the stuff you might gather from, from the outside uh, by scavenging uh, the, the remaining sort of buildings and, and, uh, and wrecks uh, of, uh, of the sort of uh, era gone by meaning the old world, the pre-cataclysm world. So you can still find canned fruit uh, in, in, in there, and they're actually really, really good. Like They're highly nutritious, they never spoil if left on the ground, that kind of stuff. Uh, but uh, you can't make more of them. There's no, no cannery, no uh, source of aluminum or aluminium, depending on how you want to pronounce it. So, uh, tin cans are a luxury item of some kind to use for uh, religious purposes. Actually, our uh, uh, example mod building project is a cannery of sorts if you know what surströmming is you can go uh, check that out fermentation of milk to make cheese and yogurt um could be fun bit maybe a bit too uh luxurious for for the post-apocalypse also the the bacteria you you might get into your fermentation process might, might uh, turn the yogurt against you yeah I think I'm not quite sure because we're kind of uh, low on staff right now but we are at six o'clock and I believe that's my uh, sign to uh, wrap this one up. So I hope you've uh, enjoyed this one hour of food talk from Surviving the Aftermath. Lots of really, really good questions. Uh, love to see that. And uh, I hope you tune back next week different topic, different host, same game, um, but uh, I think that is it for me, so uh, see you next time. <laughs>